P minus PH equals H, P times Y minus H equals H, and solving for P, we get P equals H divided by Y minus H. So if you were stupid and you use it for that equation to get an explicit expression in terms of radical square roots of H of Z, you can plug it in here and get another stupid expression with radical. And then you can do the Taylor, and you can go to Maple, and it has another name, another famous sequence, I won't tell you. See? I'm not convinced that if once you remove the yeah. stuff about the lowest, that the remaining stuff is actually a half pyramid. Yeah. Because, yeah, because, I mean, because like I mean as you were saying before, if you continue that part on the right and you go up a little bit and then you go, like, far to the left. I know, maybe it's not completely obvious, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, no, but everything that sticks to the right, to the left, sorry, to the left of the y-axis, should be above. Uh, but why? I don't know. No. Good question, good question. Uh, and Nathaniel knows that. Yeah. <laughs> I have a similar question. Yeah. I'm not convinced that you're allowed to put any half pyramid in, in any pyramid. Because, yeah. for example, you could have a pyramid that looks like a triangle. Yeah. And you could have a half pyramid that does something that goes over the side and then mostly straight up. Yeah. Now, how do you combine those two into one structure? Uh, no, this way. But maybe they explain it well. Yeah. I know it's true, but I bought a computer for my It implements it, and it goes both ways, but it's the proof for me. But, uh, but, but say again, uh, so what is So let's say you have a pyramid, at, at just to use a large number, let's say the P is yeah. 100, a triangle of height 100 with all the... the so all, all, all the complete? Yeah, the complete yeah. pyramid of height 100. And, and now the half pyramid, Okay, yeah, so this is a, this is the fun, the first one. So I remove this. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. Is it pyramid? No. The formula is pH. So for every pair of pyramid, half pyramid. Yeah. There should be a larger pyramid that includes both of those in the way you specify. Yeah. The right? way. So no, no, it's not complete. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. So the algorithm is. Oh, the algorithm. Oh, how to go back? And uh, thank you, Daniel, for pointing out. So the way to do it is first start uh, with the H. So you have H and the P. So uh, you have you have a, a, the H, a half pyramid. They have another pyramid. So you, you took the take the pyramid and, and put it a, and put it here. And then you drop the pieces a, one by one. First you drop the lowest piece. So it has to fall. It has to fall. It has to fall uh, somewhere. I mean, in this case, it has to fall here. And then you go to the next one, the second floor, and you drop it. And it has to fall on something already. So by dropping one by one every floor, you would get okay, a brand the new. The second pyramid. floor is not going to fall on top of the half pyramid part. Yeah. That's OK. That still means, what does is, what is above mean? Above means that, uh, that uh, if you so that is literally that it means that if you drop it, you will hit it eventually. Yeah, so let's have some. Sorry, I'm not talking about drawing. Okay, so, so here's the half pyramid. The eighth, and here's the pyramid. So you put the pyramid. So you drop it, and it lands here. Then you drop it, it lands here. It could overlap. Uh, it could also touch pieces from this. And uh, naturally, drop. You drop it one by one, and you get a brand new legal pyramid. And when you go back, you just uh, go at the bottom piece and now, and then everything above it, and what's above above, and it can't be above above, you collect. And there may be some gaps, that's true. But there may be some vertical gaps uh, in the dropping. Uh, but, but naturally, yeah, you're right, not completely obvious, but, was, but it's okay now. No. And so 
why we have this equation. Finally, let's look at the anatomy of a Xavier. A Xavier can have several pieces on the bottom floor. So let's look at the typical Javier with many pieces at the bottom floor. Several, not many. Uh, these two. Here I have, bring it out. Here are the 81 Javiers. I have more on my web, on the web page of this paper. So here. Let's look how a typical Xavier looks like. Let's look at all the pieces except for the very uh, rightmost one. And once again, once again, recursively, everything on top of this, and everything on top of this, it can stick out. Everything on top of this, and collect. You have a brand new Xavier with a smaller base, with a shorter base. And it's easy to see that everything left over is not the half pyramid. So once again, we have the following equation in generating functionality. Taking x as Xavier is either a Xavier is It is a, sorry, it is a pyramid. Sorry, sorry. It is a pyramid. That's a possibility. But if it's not a pyramid, it has at least two pieces at the bottom. And then, you do this construction, you take everything beside the rightmost one, and take everything above it, and everything above above, and it possibly now, uh, it uh, overlaps with this one, and you get a brand new, a, a brand new Xavier, smaller Xavier. And the left of all is the half pyramid. So you have the following beautiful equation, x equals b plus xh. That's the last equation. So we have three equations. We have this equation, so let's abbreviate it without the argument. h equals... Okay, let's, let's put it all together. And so this is one, and then h, a, a p equals h plus ph is the other equation, and the first equation was the quadratic equation, h equals z plus zh plus zh squared. So after you solve the quadratic equation, and this implies that P is H over 1 minus H. And now we can also solve for this. We already know. Uh, we put X to the other side. So we have X times 1 minus H equals P. So X can be expressed in terms of P and H. But if you know that P is really in terms of H, so we have that x is really h over 1 minus h point is square. Now, if you take, if you were stupid enough to solve the quadratic equation, get it in terms of radicals, and you plug it in here, and you do some a ninth grade manipulation with radicals, uh, lo and behold, you get a rational function. And this is a miracle. So morally, this is, should be a quadratic equation. So morally, it's, uh, in the language of uh, languages, it's an algebraic language. So it's really a miracle that it became a rational. It's like, if you have two quadra uh, quadratic irrationalities, square of two plus one, 
the square root of three minus one, for example. Usually it's not an algebraic number. But sometimes it may happen that if you add up two irrational numbers, you get a rational number. And something similar happened here, a miracle. Something that a priori, a, a quadratic expression, should be another quadratic expression with square root. But things cancel out, and at the end, eh? so here I skip some steps, eh? but that's how he do it. But this approach, and this is the textbook approach, although it's not textbook yet, it's just mentioned in a few papers, eh? this approach is how it's normally done. But I have a better way. That's the novelty of this paper. This is my website. I don't use this obnoxious square root. I, I, I always hated square root. Uh, square root uh, is a bait of existence. I'm a finitist and I'm a Pythagorean. I love whole numbers. Square root of two was a very, very, very big a trauma uh, to us Pythagoreans a long time ago. <laughs> and I still don't believe in the uh, usual uh, explanation that some numbers are irrational. This is nonsense. <laughs> Every number is rational. And it's true that this distance seems to be square root of two. The distance, the hypotenuse of this rectangle triangle, it's true that it appears to be irrational. But no! <laughs> What they proved, uh, he passes whoever it was that allegedly proves God of two is irrational, only proves that this distance does not exist. Because only rational numbers exist. So since this is, uh, of course, a contradiction, it existed. So the proof of the non existence of God of two. So of two, and hence, these things, uh, uh, P and H, do not exist. But this does exist. So let me conclude the talk in giving a purely uh, Rational explanation of the z of o, y minus z. z. And here goes. So we have a rational expression of x in terms of h. x is h. This is pure seventh grade algebra. So I don't want to use any square roots. This is seventh grade algebra. It's still, even a seventh grader knows that whenever you have something, you can always multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, and it's still the same. This is legit. So the first step is success. That's what we did. So then you multiply both sides, both, sorry, both top and bottom. And it be a square root free proof of the three to the power n plus one. That's the novelty of my new paper. It is mainly expo expo expository. Now, also a seventh grader is not allowed to open up parentheses. So z minus two z h plus z h squared. That's the next step. But now, where is it? Yeah, this. So we have h equals z plus z h plus z h squared. So by transposing, z h squared equals h minus z minus z h. So we replace z h squared by this, and we get z h divided by z minus two z h plus this plus h minus z minus z h. Now. Z cancels out. So more simplification, no square root. If you see, if you notice, no, no weight, no radicals here around. H 
collecting terms, minus 2 is the h, minus the h, h minus 3 is the h. Now, h uh, is a factoring out h at the bottom. And bingo! h cancels out, and we have this beautiful explicit rational generating function without any mention of the square root. So this is really a miracle. So morally, this would have been done a, a, a quadratic a thing. And it's a miracle that happened that sometimes God is nice and you get a beautiful explicit generating function. This is rational. And hence, explicit expression for the thing itself for n. That's why. Finally, this is still not the best possible proof because it does have some, uh, it's still manip manip manipulatorix. But there's another version of this that if you do it, and you're welcome to look at my paper, and you look at every step, you can bisectify it. And it leads to a natural bisection of that between words of length n in the alphabet 1, 0, minus 1, and this. And the beauty of this, once we have a nice natural projection between words and these domino towers, the subjects, you can construct a random, a randomly generated tower of domino and subjects of 3,000 pieces easily on the computer. Because uh, with a random number generator, you can easily construct a, a world of length one, uh, 3,000 of this. And the projection is very, very fast. And then it does it, and then you can go to the website and get beautiful, a whole book. Beautiful book of, uh, of uh, randomly generated stuff. Yes, uh, very nice uh, to look at. Thanks for your attention, and thank you. And next speaker will be somebody from out of time, town, speaking about very, very interesting uh, work about using techniques from physics to do, uh, to, do uh, to study combinatorial games. Uh, he's a great student, so especially great students who come to, uh, to cheer him up, but he's also a very good speaker probably, and he did amazing work. And also, uh, today's a local speaker, even though he's a nice local speaker, he's still a local speaker, so it's not dinner. But, uh, since it's out of town speaker uh, from UCLA.